Did the former January 6th Select Committee destroy evidence? Could this be another Hillary Clinton bleach bid and hammer gambit to destroy emails? Or like when the Mueller investigators all conveniently forgot their passwords so that by entering the wrong one too many times, it wiped their phones clean so that Republican lawmakers could never see what was on them. That's what Congressman Barry Loudermilk is asking in his capacity as chairman of the House Administration Subcommittee on Oversight, reviewing the work of the former J6 committee. Now that he's been told by the former chairman of that committee, Benny Thompson, that all the taped depositions of star witnesses like Cassidy Hutchinson are now missing. Loudermilk tells Just the News, quote, I wrote a letter to Benny Thompson asking for them, and he confirmed that they did not preserve those tapes. He didn't feel that they had to. But according to House rules, you have to preserve any data and any information and documents that are used in an official proceeding, end quote. One of our next, one of our first guests tonight, a J6 defendant, responded to the news by saying, quote, I filed a motion over this as deletion of evidence of any kind is a denial of Brady for all defendants. The motion was denied, and yet here we are with another Brady violation, 4.4 terabytes of info deleted, end quote. Letter Milk also is pointing out on his social media that, quote, after prompting the White House and DHS to return interview transcripts of several White House and U.S. Secret Service officials on January 6th, we received hundreds of pages of heavily redacted documents from the White House and nothing from DHS. What are Benny Thompson, the White House and DHS, hiding? End quote. It really makes you think, huh? Now add to all of this what Republican Congressman Clay Higgins of Louisiana is now saying. He claims that over 200 undercover federal agents were planted in the January 6th crowds, some dressed as Trump supporters, and that others were inside the Capitol prior to the breach. Higgins says about the online chat groups and forums prior to that day, which the media have always played up for the insurrection angle, that quote, when you track the text threads and the communications within those groups and find the origins of su suggestions of potential violence or an active occupation of the Capitol on January 6th, you'll find that those messages were led by members of the groups that ended up to be the FBI agents that had infiltrated the group. So the FBI's involvement was deep, not just on January 6th, but on the days and weeks and months prior, end quote. Joining us now to discuss is Jeff Zink, a U.S. congressional candidate for Arizona's 3rd Congressional District and the father of January 6th defendant Ryan Zink. They both join us now. Thanks for being here tonight, gentlemen. Jeff, I'll start with you. You're running for Congress right now, and the more you're hearing coming out of Congress concerning what the feds knew and did in the lead-up to January 6th, does it seem more and more likely to you, because it does to me, that this was a trap set by Pelosi and her Praetorian Guard, if you may call it that, from the beginning to ensnare Trump supporters? Oh, absolutely, and thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, Nancy Pelosi and everybody else has had a opportunity to do the right thing, and they chose not to. We have a corrupt system that has now literally targeted Americans, and they're using the Patriot uh, Act, which was never intended and was specifically told, do not use this against the American people. The Congress... Uh, the reason why I'm running now is because they are self-serving and not serving the, the constituents here uh, for the American people. And I choose to represent the people. And by them picking the fight with my, about my son, this is something that I'm very, very upset about. And, you know, he has been convicted of a felony and two misdemeanors. And he is facing up to, if they put the enhancement charge on there, of 31 years uh, here in uh, uh, prison. This is something that is completely outrageous and should never, no one should ever be facing this. No, you're exactly right. It's absolutely heartbreaking. So, Ryan, after everything your father has said, can you explain for my audience here tonight what exactly happened on January 6th? Because to my knowledge, you didn't go inside the Capitol. You did nothing violent. So like so many other January 6th defendants, you did nothing wrong, really. And yet here you are feeling the whole weight of the federal government trying to rain down on you. Can you just tell our audience what happened that day and what's happened since? <laughs> 